the Scottish thistle. The thistle of Scotland is said to be the oldest national flower on record. The legend of how this proud and regal plant became a national emblem goes back many hundreds of years to the time when Scotland was being rampaged by the vicious Vikings. From 795, Scotland was under assault by wave upon wave of vicious Vikings. It was a frightening time to live in. Scotland was vulnerable to attack, its delicate civilization built by generations of Christian monks. For hundreds of years, much of Scotland was part of the Kingdom of Norway. Even after Norway became Christianized, the attacks continued. Not until 1266 was the Western Isle returned to Scottish rule. By 1263, however, Norway seems to have had little interest in their former territory. That was until King Alexander III proposed to buy back the Western Isles and Kintyre from the Norse King Hakon IV. The thought of relieving King Alexander of some of his riches and territories appears to have rekindled Norse interest in Scotland. Late in the summer of 1263, King Hakon of Norway, now intent on conquering the Scots, set off with a sizeable fleet of longships for the Scottish coast. Gales and fierce storms forced some of the ships onto the beach at Largs in Ayrshire, and a Norwegian force was landed. Legend has it that at some point during the invasion, the Norsemen tried to surprise the sleeping Scottish clansmen. In order to move more stealthily under the cover of darkness, the Norsemen removed their footwear, but as they crept barefoot they came across an area of ground covered in thistles, and one of Hakon's men unfortunately stood on one and shrieked out in pain thus alerting the clansmen to the advancing Norsemen. His shout warned the Scots who defeated the Norsemen at the Battle of Largs, thus saving Scotland from invasion. The important role that the thistle had played was recognised and so was chosen as Scotland's national emblem. Hakon died returning to Norway, a treaty returned the Hebrides to Scottish rule and a marriage contract wedged Scotland and Norway. Another version of this legend attributes the legendary King Accius with the appropriation of the thistle. This king is said to have founded the Order of the Thistle in the 9th century, limiting the number of knights to 13, including himself. Unfortunately, this story is yet to be proved, but there is definitely an Order of the Knights of the Thistle which commenced or was re-founded by James VII in 1687. The Order has a chequered history, but today is firmly anchored in St Giles Cathedral, Edinburgh. The knights have the motto, Nemo me impune lacessit, which translates as no one assails me with impunity, but is more commonly read as, O door meddle with me. This motto is also used by Scotland as a nation, and, thinking of the spiny prickles of the thistle, could hardly be bettered. The Fairy Flag of Dunvegan one of the most treasured possessions of the Clan MacLeod is the famous fairy flag of Dunvegan. The story behind the flag is one of the greatest romantic tales in all the Highlands. A great young chief of the Clan MacLeod fell in love with a fairy princess, a being she, one of the shining folk. The pair were determined to marry, but the king of the fairies forbade the union. Such was the young fairy princess's distress that he finally relented and agreed to a period of hand fasting. This was a form of trial marriage which traditionally would last for a year and a day and was common in the Highlands at the time. However, the king demanded that at the end of the hand fasting the princess must return to her own folk and take nothing human with her. The couple lived in harmony and soon a young son was born to them. Alas, the time sped by and soon the hand fasting was over. The couple parted with great sorrow at the famous fairy bridge and the princess returned to the fairy kingdom. As she left, she made her husband the chief promise that her son would be cared for well and never allowed to cry for the sound of his cries would cause her untold grief, even in the faraway fairy realm. The chief kept his promise and the young MacLeod was never left unattended and never allowed to cry. However. The young chief grieved terribly for the loss of his wife and the other clansfolk decided that they should organise a great party in the castle of Dunvegan on the occasion of his birthday to take his mind away from his grief. The birthday celebration ran long into the night with high spirits and the young nursemaid assigned to watch over the infant 
crept from the room to watch the revelries. As she watched, enraptured by the celebrations, she did not hear the baby kick off his covers and begin to cry. The child's mother heard the cries from her fairy realm, and suddenly she appeared by his side. She took up the young baby and cradled him back to sleep, covering him in a fairy shawl. She sang to the child and was still singing when the maid returned. The maid could hear the lullaby, but not see where it was coming from. She immediately took the baby with the shawl she did not recognise to the chief and told him what had happened. Many years later, when the child grew into a young man, he recounted a tale to his father that the shawl was a great talisman for the clan and that should they ever find themselves in mortal danger, they could wave the flag three times and the fairy legions would come to their aid. However, this talisman could only be used three times, whereupon it would return to where it had come from, taking the flag waver with it. The chief instantly realised the young man was telling the truth and the flag was kept safe. The flag has since been used twice, once when the MacLeods were vastly outnumbered by their bitter enemies, the MacDonalds. The chief took the flag from its case and waved it three times, at which point the battle suddenly turned in favour of the MacLeods. A second time, the land was blighted by a plague on the cattle and the clan kinsmen were dying of starvation. The chief again raised the flag and the fairies returned to bring the cattle back to life. This may seem like a fanciful tale, but many MacLeods believe wholeheartedly in the legend. So much so, that during World War II, many MacLeod servicemen carried a picture of the flag in their wallets. It is said that of the MacLeod airmen who defended these shores during the Battle of Britain, not one who carried the picture was lost, and indeed the chief of the clan offered to bring the flag to Dover to wave at the Germans should they attempt to invade. The flag can still be seen in Dunvegan Castle on Skye. The end. Don't forget to like and subscribe and press the wee bell notification. And a huge big thank you to all my subscribers and patrons. See you next week. Bye bye.